again, welcome. My name is Mark Hutchins. And uh, one of the things I told uh, Jason going into this, I said that the important thing is when you work with volunteers, or even if they're not volunteers, maybe they even come from a communication or broadcast type background, but they've never been on a film set, that it can be very intimidating. Truly, I've gone to Africa twice. The first time I went to Africa, I get off the plane and I'm thinking, you know, okay, which hand do I shake with? You know, but do I wipe with this one? You know, I'm not really sure. What's the, what's the custom here? Can I drink the water? Where are the bathrooms? How do you say bathroom in Swahili? You know, it's like those kind of challenges where it creates a little bit of anxiety in me. And I'm thinking, okay, what do I do? Where do I go? Who do I talk to? Who should I not talk to? How I talk to a woman? Is that forbidden? Will I lose my head? You know, you're just not quite sure exactly what to expect. The first time I was ever on a film set, like a true film set, uh, outside of like student or smaller films, was War of the Worlds. Who remembers War of the Worlds that shot here in December of 04? I was an extra. I was one of the uh, Army guys on that, uh, on that film. And I arrived on set my very first day. It was like 4.30 in the morning on a Monday. And I'm there with like a bunch of other guys. And we're like cattle. We're just kind of like walking on set, wondering where to go, what to do. And then like, I go to this tent over here. So we go to this tent over here and we get dressed. Go to this tent over here. We go to this tent over here. We do this. Go over here and eat. We go over here and eat. Okay, go get on the bus. We go get on the bus. You know, but I didn't know anything. So I just feel like I'm kind of just being moved around, and I would have liked to know, okay, what some of this terminology they're using. They're talking about G&E. They're talking about, you know, um, um, OT. Over time. They're talking about whatever they're talking about. They're throwing symbols or terms out there, and I don't know what it means. And I felt almost at a loss. Well, as time went on, and I began to learn production and do more production as crew, I begin to learn what some of this terminology, what some of the set expectations or set it is, and I begin to feel more comfortable. So now I can go on any set. I mean, I'm not like knowing it all, but I'm comfortable enough going on set to know when someone's talking about this, that, or the next thing. I think I'm out of those sheets. You looking for another one? No. Oh, oh gotcha. Um, when when uh, someone's talking about this, that, or the next thing, I kind of know what's going on. So I've got that, that sense, no longer am I anxious, but I feel a sense of peace being on set around talent, around other crew. So I told Jason, I said, if we take the time to just offer a few of these little silly classes, and it could be kind of silly, uh, production training to provide an opportunity for you guys to learn, okay, what does this mean? What can I expect? What should I not do? What can I do? Then it takes off an entire level of anxiety, and it gives you a sense of peace being on a set. This is universal stuff. I don't care if it's Spielberg set. I don't care if it's, you know, three guys making a film in a backyard. These are universal principles that you should carry on. This will also impress your friends and family. So if you go on the set and someone's talking about a stinger, you're like, I know what that is. It's not a stinger, it's bees. No, it's not a bee. It's something else, and you're able to explain that. So to lead off, I'm going to talk about safety. Now, for safety... Safety first, our primary goal is to shoot a safe film, hands down. We want to shoot a safe film. We want everybody to come out of this film, all their limbs, all the parts. We don't want to dedicate it to you or your child because a light fell on them. So safety first. Everyone on set is a safety assistant. This is what's so important. All of you guys work for Stuart. You didn't know that, did you? You didn't know you had a job coming in here other than what you were doing. Everyone is a safety assistant, every one of you. Any and every one of you, each and every one of you, I should say, has the, uh, has the responsibility to call out any concern you see on set for any reason. Okay? Now, we, I'll cover this in a minute. We go, quiet on set, quiet on set. Okay, sound, hold camera, action. Now, we want what? We want to focus on that scene, Right? We want that to be the primary thing. We don't want to hear a water bottle. We don't want to hear you talking to your friend. We don't want to hear any texting going on. Primary purpose is to capture that scene. We don't want anybody bothering it. Who yells cut on set? The director yells cut on set, right? We know this. But here's Susie Q over here. She's an extra. Let's say she's one of the cheerleaders, right? I'm not saying you guys are cheerleaders. I'm just pointing to you girls and your girls over there. Cheerleader, right? <laughs> Sitting on set, you're kind of looking. All of a sudden, you look up. Right over the actor, there's something that's like teetering. You're thinking, that light's going to fall on that person's head. It's just teetering there, all right? Man, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to get in trouble. So you just kind of sit there quietly. Thump. There goes our actress. She's in the hospital for a week. We shut down production, right? Not good. Not good. No one will fault you for saying, cut, on set. No one will fault you. 
if you back there and you scream, cut, 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 light, and you point to a light, and it wasn't a problem, maybe it was just a little wind, and you saw it wrong, it's, it's okay. We'll check it out. We'll thank you for being observant and paying attention, and we'll just do it again. So every one of you has not only the right, but the responsibility to speak up if you see any issues of safety on set. All right, terminology. I'm just going to run through these. Uh, stop me by raising your hand if you have any questions. All right, PA is a production assistant. We're talking about a PA. We need a PA. We need a production assistant. Production assistants do anything and everything. You, know, you get water. You go pick up something off the truck if told to. Uh, you may um, help an actor. You may actually stand in as an actor. It may be whatever. So production assistant. Number two is call sheet. A call sheet... And this is a question that I'm going to address right off the bat. People ask me, where are we going to be next week or tomorrow? Where are we going to start tomorrow? What time are we starting? We're a little behind our call sheets because we're a little behind on a few other things, but don't sweat it. It's all cool. If you all know all the other things, challenges we've had in the last 48 hours, call sheets are nothing. So we are doing good, all right? But call sheets basically are going to tell you when, where, who, answer all those questions for you. So you'll get a call sheet. If you're supposed to be there, crew, you'll always get a call sheet. It'll say this location, this address, this time, be prepared for this. These are the scenes we're going to shoot. This is the second meal, third meal. This is when we're going to wrap, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a ton of information that you're going to get in a one-sheeter that you're going to be able to take, look over it, okay? I know what to do and I know where to be. I'm going to say this about call time. Call time will be on your call sheet. I want to make this real clear for you. Call time is the time that we start working, not the time you get there unless you don't care about the first meal. If our call time is noon, and it says, this is your call time, noon, if you want to eat on set, first meal, your breakfast, whatever it may be, then you will come at 11.30 to eat. Call time noon, you can come at noon, be on set and ready to go, but don't come and set at noon, then grab a donut, then grab some coffee, then go start chatting with friends. We want you to start at noon. Be ready to go. You know, report to your department, report to uh, whoever's in charge, find out what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, and move forward. If you want to eat that first meal, always come a half hour early. All right, wrap. Wrap is the time that we end. A typical standard, and I talked about this later, I'll talk about this later on, but also, there's a 12 hour day. It's kind of an industry standard. We won't always work 12 hours. Some days we may even squeak an extra half hour out of you, but we're looking at a standard 12 hour day. Wrap times are usually 12 hours following your call time. So we start at noon, we end at midnight. Just kind of know that going into it. You may get out a little earlier, maybe 15 minutes later, but we're looking at doing a 12-hour day. So wrap means it's time for you and your department to get everything together, get it stored and put away so you can go home and get to bed. Hot set. All right, a hot set is any set that has been dressed by a set dresser, by production design, props in place, everything's ready to go for that scene. That's a hot set. Set dresser is going to take this box, this plastic jug, whatever it is, full of spoons, and they're going to set it there. Here, right there, that, that's, that's, for the, that's part of the set right there, okay? You wander in to the location, to the set. You look at it, oh, look at this. Oh, interesting. You've just now moved potentially a very important either prop or piece of set dressing. You've moved it, you've changed it, you've altered it. If we don't catch it before we start shooting, we could have continuity issues. We could have issues with maybe the uts being shown where we didn't want it shown, so we intentionally turned it so it's just off camera, and now we have uts there, and now we've got to spend more time and money in post-production fixing that. So any hot set, when you come on a set, you want to find out, is it a hot set? If it is, don't move or touch anything unless you are props 
or you are a set designer, or you are the production designer, and you have authority to be in there touching things. I don't even touch hot sets as a DP. The director doesn't even touch hot sets. The director goes and says, where's my set dresser? Hey, can we move this, that, or the next thing? I'm camera. I want to shoot. This chair is in my way. I find the set dresser. Hey, can I move this chair? She say, okay, I'll take care of it for you. I put the camera there. I back away. She puts it back. So very important on a hot set, when you come in and you're a talent or you're an extra or whatever it is you do, don't decide, hey, I'm just going to sit down while I'm waiting on things to happen. You've just altered the set, and we don't want you altering the set. So very important. When people say it's a hot set, don't touch anything. Stand with your hands by your side real still so you're not running into anything. All right. Uh, quiet. Oh, we love this one. Where's Bill? Bill, raise your hand. That's the guy you're going to be hearing just a nausea. Quiet on set. Quiet for rehearsal. Quiet for playback. Quiet, quiet, quiet. It's like a broken record. We'll get a shirt that says quiet, quiet, quiet on the front of it. Quiet means quiet. This is not quiet. I'm not talking. This is not quiet. Okay, common mistakes. You're back there, you're thinking, I'm not, I'm not gonna talk. But you will, we'll hear everything. I love my sound guy. Where's Gelzo? There he is. I've talked about, y'all talked about Gelzo. Gelzo is our uh, sound mixer on set. Gelzo has great ears. He's got beautiful ears. We love his ears. They're pretty too. He stands there and he's got a headphone on. There's microphones. You may not even know there's a microphone and it's near you. And he's listening to make sure that everything is as it should be. There's not this humming from the air conditioner. There's not a refrigerator kicking on and off in the other room. There's not bees or crickets buzzing in the other room. And you're not sitting there wrinkling your water bottle. So quiet means you lock it up, you stop what you're doing, and you just freeze. Don't even sit down. You know, if you old guys like me, your knees start popping, right? But chairs start bending under the weight of you, creaking, noisy stuff. No. Quiet means lock it up. You don't move. That's what it is. It's beautiful. All right. Now, once we're done, well, I'll throw action and I'll have this right here. Um, once we're done and you hear the term cut, that's when you can resume your regular business. You go right back to whatever you were doing. So the two things you're listening for are quiet and cut. Also, if we're shooting a scene in here and I've got crew or talent milling around the hallway right there and I yell quiet on set, this gentleman right here in this shirt and the jeans is going to lean his head back and he's going to yell quiet on set and he's going to echo it down the hall. And there's people around that corner toward the front door, they're going to echo it. Quiet on set. It's echoed all the way down. So everyone knows all the way around that it's shh. You shoot it. We're done. Cut. 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 All the way down. I've actually walked people by people offset, and I'll see them. They're real stoic, like they're praying. They're like this, and I walk by. What are you doing? Are we filming? No. Oh, you know they didn't hear it because nobody bothered echoing cut. So if you echo quiet on set, make sure you echo cut as well, so it's passed all the way down. Also, and Bill made a good point last time. I think it was Bill. Um, we don't shoot a scene for 20 minutes. So you're not going to be standing there for 20 minutes like having to go to the bathroom, afraid you're going to wet yourself or something because it's like, okay, I can't move because it's like, okay, it's like 20 seconds, cut, a few more steps, you know, quiet on set, cut, a few more steps. You know, if you've got to go, bolt it and you'll make it. <laughs> All right, action. Action basically means that actors are doing their thing, cameras rolling, moving forward. Back to one is a common term. Back to one for crew. Back to one for talent. Back to one means you go, I didn't have crew on there, but it's the same thing. You go back to your first position. So you might be an actor, and I might say, okay, here's your one. There's your two. That's it. So during a scene, action, cut. You've just transitioned. Okay, do it again. Back to one. If you're talent, if you're new at being a talent, and we've got to do it over and over again, it's not necessarily your fault. There's a lot of things that happen. There's sound. There's camera. There's focus on the camera. There's other things happening around you. Don't suddenly think, I've got to do this 12 times. I'm no good at walking from point A to point B. You may be great at walking from point A to point B, but I may not be able to pull focus on the camera while we're doing a dolly shot. 
And then at the same time, I might be making squeaky noises that makes Gelzo upset, and so now I'm in trouble. So this, we all kind of work together you know, in synergy to make this work. All right, hot points, very, very important. Another one of these hot words. Hot points is just one of those words. You think something pointy and something hot. It just doesn't sound good. Stuart loves to hear hot points, right? He's like, ooh. Okay, hot points means anything coming through, coming your way, that is a potential hazard to you and your body. Okay? Get out of the way. Get out of the way. It could be um, a hot light that we're carrying off set. It could be a piece of camera gear that if you run into us and drop it, that's 80 grand. It could be something that's sharp. It could be something that's just long. Anything. And what I want to ask you also, when we say hot points and you're in a doorway, don't just go like this against the doorway. Actually get out of the doorway and go even further if you can to get out of the way. It just helps us. It helps G&E, which is, I'll cover that in a minute, um, to get around and do their job without having to worry about harming you or running into you. Uh, crossing is just a common courtesy. I'll write on here crossing. If you happen to be on set, G&E, sound, camera, set designer, wardrobe, hair, makeup, and you happen to walk in front of the camera between the camera and the talent, a courtesy is just saying crossing, crossing. It just lets me know. I'm like real conscious on the, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, suddenly a body flies through. I'm, what was that? You know, it's like a UFO. No, get crossing. I know now you're walking through. Copy that, roger that. Um, it works a lot better when you're on a walkie-talk and you hear someone say, hey, I need this, I need that. Okay. Okay, what? Okay, you're going to get it. Okay, you get somebody to get it. Okay, you're going to take care of it. You know, okay doesn't always mean. Maybe you said okay because you really didn't hear what I said, so you don't want to sound like you're deaf. So you're like, okay. But then you don't do anything. So when you actually say, copy that, roger that, you're clear. It's very clear to me that you've heard what I said. You've heard what so-and-so said. You can go take care of it, and it's a done thing. Uh, reset. Reset is mostly, but talent will hear this, it's mostly for uh, set dressers or props. Um, reset is to put a set back in its original condition for another take. So we have a stack of papers, and the talent takes the papers, and they swing them across the floor like that because they're angry or something. Uh, okay, cut. Reset. Put them back up there. So if you're talent, you hear that term, they're not talking to you. They're talking to the person that's supposed to put that back where it needs to be. Um, apple box, stingers, and C-stand. These are three common things you'll hear on set. Just to keep you up to speed, apple box is a standard wooden box. It comes in four sizes, but it's used for everything and anything. We might have you actually stand on an apple box two inches off the ground because you're just a little challenged, you know, vertically. <laughs> so we're going to get you up there so you've got nice eye line with the other actor rather than being like this. Who, who, you ever see Smallville? Remember Smallville, the television show on, on SW or was WB or whatever? Uh, the Curly Cade, uh, Lana Lang, Kira, whatever her name is, she would stand on apple boxes all the time in her scenes with uh, Tom Welling because he was like this and she's like this and it just doesn't quite work, so they had to put on apple boxes. Um, stingers, stinger, stinger, stinger. When somebody talks about watch the stinger, it doesn't mean a bee's buzzing around your head. A stinger's a term for an extension cord, but we call it a stinger. Why? Because it stings you. Oh, I did it again. Thank you. That's like the third time I've done that. I can't spell. That's why I'm a DP. I don't teach English. Um, stinger. Okay, a stinger is basically a, an extension cord. They'll be running all over the set. Watch out for them. If I say watch out for the stinger, you know I mean there's a cord. A C stand. C stands you'll see all over set as well. Standard three-legged sta uh, legged stands. Mine are black. Some of them are, are chrome. But they're used for lighting. They're used for... Other type of grip gear they use to hold up sound equipment sometimes if needed. Okay, any question about terminology? Anything else you've heard on set that you didn't see here you want to ask me about? Something you don't understand? You guys are a needy crowd. All right, all right, stick that right there. All right, moving forward, let's talk about an explanation of the 12 hour day. This can be confusing at times. All right, so basically our day starts and ends over 12 hours. We start at 1 p.m., we end at 1 a.m. Industry standard, once again, it doesn't mean, yeah, doesn't mean we're necessarily going to keep you that long, but expect to be there that long. Um, 
breakfast, when you hear the term breakfast, it's always the meal 30 minutes prior to call time. Always 30 minutes prior to call time. If you want to sleep an extra 30 minutes and show up at call time, knock yourself out. It's not a problem. But if you want to eat breakfast, we want you here, if this is the case, at 11.30 p.m. Breakfast will be up and running. You can come in, grab yourself whatever you want to eat there, eat, be done with it so you can be at your department by 1 p.m. Oh, that didn't sound too good, did it? All right. The second meal is always six hours later. So in this case, it would be 7 p.m. Always six hours, and it's always lunch. Sometimes we literally start at 6 p.m. and then at 6 a.m., and so lunch is at 12 midnight. But just so you understand, lunch is always six hours later. So you can be expected. it Now, give or take, 30 minutes, people. If we're going to 7.15, we'll try to let you know it's coming. Just chill. We're going to get you out there as quick as possible. We want to respect the fact that you're out there working. We need to feed you. Six hours later, usually wrapping. And as far as I know at this point, this meal will always be a takeaway, some type of sandwich in a box or a bag. Take it. You go home. You may not even want to eat. Man, we go straight home and go to bed. But it's there for you if you want it. Lunch or lunch? Okay, we're saying lunch is going to be an hour. All right, so we'll get you in sometime between five and a half and six hours. Go an hour. Here we go. All right, Come, turnaround time, 12 hours. What that means is typically what we're looking to respect, we have some challenges, what we're looking to respect, before you come back, you're going to get 12 hours off. Eight hours of sleep, four hours of play. Um, any questions about this 12-hour day? Now, quick, quick, quick here. Not everyone is going to come at 1 p.m. if that's the call time. Some of you will come at 2 or 3 or even 8 after lunch. So whatever, whenever you're needed, we're calling you in at that time. All right, the craft service table. All right, this is always kind of a touchy one. I was on the set as an extra uh, during Evan, Evan Almighty. Remember that shot up in Crozet back in 2007 with Steve Carell? Tom Shadak was the uh, director. At Evan Almighty, as an extra, like $85 a day. It's kind of nice, you know, but just sit out there. It's like 14-hour days. You know, you just sit around a lot. You go on set. You're there 30 minutes. You go back and sit around a lot. They fed us like kings. I mean, they fed us like kings. They had fresh gold fried shrimp. They had steak. They had the tilapia. They had all this crazy food out there. And then, and then, every day, Tom Shadiak would have the ice cream truck a smoothie truck, some kind of other truck, and then a fourth truck, and they would rotate. I was there like six days. He, every, he would pull the truck up, and 400 extras could go up and get anything they wanted off that truck. This is not Evan <laughs> Almighty. <laughs> Just so you know right off the bat, okay? I would love to have the smoothie truck come out and feed everyone here working, okay, cast and crew, but it probably won't happen. So we have a little table, probably half the size, with some sweets, some salts, right? I don't mean sugar and salt. I mean actually some food, but uh, some drinks, water, some sugary drinks, hopefully some fruity drinks for you guys to have, especially my crew, to have some form of refreshment. It's a hot day. You get here at noon. It's 4 o'clock. Bronson, my uh, ACO over there, is like, oh, man, I need some water. He's got to be able to go over there, get a bottle of water so he's not passed out and dehydrated, and I don't have to do his job. So he needs to be drinking and taking care of yourself. He may just, you know, want a little piece of candy or something. It's right over there. Please don't use the craft service table as a fourth meal. This is a micro, low-budget, independent film. We have limitations. We have challenges. Every film does. Food is one of the most expensive things on set. Jason showed me his corn. He's like, look at all this food we got. I'm thinking, that's two days' worth. It's gone like that. You need to drink. You need to eat. You need to keep yourself going. It's important that you take care of yourself. We want you to go over there and grab something to eat when you're hungry. We want you to grab something to drink, especially water. Water, water, water when you're thirsty. But please just be mindful that if I'm on set six hours into it, lunch is going to be half an hour late, I go get water. There's no water or there's no food. There's no drinks. I'm going to pass out, and then what we're going to do. Um, so just be mindful that it's for the talent and crew only. 
background extras, I'm not abusing you. You will be, be provided water, and if we have a light snack, we'll give it to you. But that crafts table is for talent, speaking principles, and supporting roles, or if you have a role where you come on set and you speak, that's your table, that's the crew table. You've got to protect the crew and the talent that's going to be there most days in and out. Um, drink plenty of water and carry one of those, I don't have it with me. You go to Lowe's, like on the checkout line, there's like a little tiny permanent marker. It's like 99 cents, a little keychain on it. They don't have them anymore? No, I went to look for them. Well, grab yourself a permanent marker, stick it in your back pocket with the Staples, Staples does. Thank you. Go to Staples. 99 cents. The reason you want one of those markers is to mark your water bottle. It happens all the time. Water bottles, they all look alike. I open mine up, I take a drink down to here, I set it down. Gels opens his up, takes a drink, sets it down. We walk back, I'm looking at Gelzo, I think he's Jeremy, he thinks I'm Jeremy, neither one of us want to drink after the other person. So what do we do? We get another bottle of water. We have just wasted two bottles of water, which are usually 35 cents each, and we've wasted those resources uh, for, the, for the rest of the crew. When you write your name on that, then it gives you more accountability. You're going to keep up with your drink, and no one else is going to be picking it up. And that's very important. I don't care what set it is. I've seen large sets like HBO and uh, John Adams in the miniseries. Crew was like marking their names on their, on their bottles and stuff. Extras usually didn't do it, but the crew did. And that was very important to reduce cost. We don't want to just be wasting things. I'm big into not wasting things. And usually at the end of the day, I walk around any crew, music video, commercial shoot, whatever, and I'll find five or six or ten bottles of water that are just like capped off. Okay? Uh, and somebody else finds it, they can say, hey, Gelzo, here's your water bottle. Oh, I couldn't find that. Thanks. So keep drinks uh, and food, with the exception of water, near the craft service table. We don't want you taking food and drinks and just wandering around the set for a variety of reasons. Water with the lid on it, carry it with you, no problem. Keep the rest of stuff. Just kind of try to stay close. Oh. Everybody write down on your paper, bring a chair. You got one of those little 5 or $10 yard chairs you fold up. Crew, cast, if it's not too late for some of my crew, bring a chair. This is... Unfortunately, not a production. We're going to have tables and chairs set out all the time. So if 60% of you bring chairs, the rest of you will probably be fine. So bring one of those chairs to sit down on. Good. All right. Working with talent. All right. Another semi-sensitive topic. People get, they miss, this is a hot set, right? Um, people misunderstand this. I don't want you to misunderstand this. If there's anybody here that's Stephanie who's playing Faith, if you're like her best friend, I'm going to tell you right now, not on this film. On this film, no talent is your pal, no talent is your next door neighbor, no talent is your buddy. Talent is talent. We're going to treat them like talent, and I'll explain why. On this film, as in on every film, talent is to be politely spoken to, otherwise left alone. Talent comes in, you greet them when they walk on set, Hi, how are you doing? Good, doing good. Don't stop them. Don't talk about your planner wart or your hamster or anything else. Let them get to the trailer. They're going to report to whoever they report to. They go into usually uh, do hair and makeup. They walk over to the new wardrobe. Then they go to set. The whole time they're doing that, typically, talent I've talked to, they're going through lines. They're getting in character. They're thinking about what do I need to do today. And when you stop them, and you start gabbing on about some story or how it's so glad to work with you, Mr. Estrada, you know, then, like, they're thrown out of that character and they're having to almost reboot and do it all over again. So what we want to do is we want to respect that craft. It, they're not demigods. You know, we don't worship them. I don't care if it's Tom Cruise or, or uh, the girl that's playing Faith that's never done anything big like that before. We respect the fact that they got a job to do and we don't want to come in the way of them doing that job. So... You don't want to talk to them, be polite, but don't stop them to ramble on about your, your history or anything else. When talent is sitting alone, it's not an invitation to visit them. If you're over there and they're sitting here, oh, they're poor, let me go talk to them. No, please don't. If they want to talk to you, they'll go to where you are, they'll sit down, and they'll talk to you. Usually they're running through those lines, they're getting in character. Avoid the eye line. 
All right, avoid the eye line is an expression that we use in the industry. And anyone working on a professional set knows this and will be thrown off quickly on any set in Hollywood or smaller independent film sets, they know what they're doing. An eye line is when you're staring directly at an actor when they're acting. So the actor's doing their thing. They're in character. Maybe they're rehearsing, or maybe the camera's rolling, and it's an emotional scene, and they're going at it, and they look around because, they're, you know, just, what do you do? When I, when I talk, I look around. When you talk, you look around. They look around, and they see you like, <laughs> staring right at them. It totally throws them out of character. I've had actors, ah. The director's like, what, what? He's like, that guy's just staring at me. The dude's like, just staring at him. Always divert your eyes. We make fun of that, right? Divert, divert your eyes. But it's good not to be looking at talent. You can see it later. You'll see dailies at the end of the day or the next day or whatever else. We'll show the crew, hey, this is our progress. Take a look. And you get to kind of huddle around a monitor, kind of see some stuff. Ooh, ooh, that looks good. Wow, I'm excited about coming back tomorrow. But not while we're shooting. If it's in, the, if it's in a field and they're, you know, 50 yards out and you're standing back there and they can't really make eye contact with you, I don't care if you watch what's going on. But if we're in a scene and Gelzo's acting and I'm standing there and I'm just staring at him like this and he looks at me, he's out of character just like that. Totally breaks concentration, hurts the performance. You're having to pick up and do another retake. Okay? Um, thankfully, our talent is not volatile like some of Hollywood, those Hollywood types, but we still want to respect their craft. So by all means, please avoid that eye line. All right, any questions about talent? Yes, sir. If talent comes, a great question. If they come and sit down with you during a meal, by all means. If they're sitting by themselves or they're sitting with another actor, they could very well be rehearsing lines or talking about the character. Great question. So once again, let them come to you. Otherwise, leave them alone. Before and after sets really the best time to catch them if you just want to tell them they're doing a good job or just say hello to them, by all means. I mean, you don't want to be rude to them. Like, nobody's talking to me. Yes, sir. Can we get autographs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at the premiere. All right, <laughs> locations. That's a good answer. I like that. Yeah. All right, locations. Very, 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 very important. I just keep building on these varies. The location is not your home, it's not your office, it's not your yard. Uh, it might be. Are we shooting at your house? Raise your hand if you're shooting at your house. Or are we shooting on your property? Or are we shooting in your car? Okay. If this is not the case, it is not yours. Don't treat it like your house. We don't want you sitting on the furniture, putting your feet up, sitting your drinks on the wood furniture, anything like that. We don't want you putting your hands on the walls. We don't want you standing there and putting your feet on the walls. We don't want you leaning against the walls. We don't want you doing anything with that location at all except walk in, leave the smallest footprint possible. Don't walk around other people's rooms. If it's not your house, don't go through the drawers. I've seen it. I've seen it. Some, I don't have anything to do. I'm just going to go through people's drawer. What the heck are you doing? Going through somebody's drawers. I mean, what, what is that about? I'm just looking at their clothes. It's weird, you know? <laughs> don't lay on their bed. Don't play with their light switches. Don't look in their closets. Don't use their bathrooms. All this is very, very important. It's not your location. We'd be either be given special permission or we've paid for that location, and we don't want you to ruin that relationship by taking liberties that you would take in your own home. Okay? I respect every location I go to. It is not mine. I know it's not mine. I respect it. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Avoid carpets. If you can avoid a carpet and go around the other room, go around the other room. Your little feet carry a lot of dirt. And maybe not, you know, hey, we got two people living here. It stays clean. You get 40 people in there running through that carpet for three days, in and out, in and out, in and out. Suddenly you got this track right to the middle. We've had to clean carpets in the past. We've had to replace wood floors in the past. Uh, that's another story. But that's happened. Okay? No drinks and rooms. Unless you have to bottle water, use only the designated restroom. Langley, is Langley here? Langley Coleman is location manager. He'll tell you where you go to the bathroom and where you don't go to the bathroom. Don't just wander into a bathroom because you've got to go. Here's the bathroom. I'm telling him to put tape across anything we shouldn't go into. If we have designated restrooms we use, we don't just use any restroom. Yeah, there may be a line. There may be a line. Like, treat it like you're at the fair. There's a big old line at the fair. Um, our locations are not open sets. Please do not invite someone. Don't invite your friends, your cousins, your grandmothers, anything else. Talent, your, um, 
you're 15 and under. What's that the number? We fit, 15 and under? 15 and under, I think we would like to have a parent there. So you're obviously allowed to be there with your 15 year old or younger. If you're 16 and you're responsible, parents, I don't mind if you drop them off. By no means should anyone uh, go to a set that's not invited. The difference is a location is the house we're shooting in. This is looking down. This is the driveway. Here's the street. This is the location. This house. The set might be the front yard. It might be inside the house. It might be the backyard. If you come on set or on location, you park here, and you're brought on, and they have a tent here, and they say, here's where we want you to stay. Please do not just wander over here and decide you're going to check out the set or wander inside to look at how it looks or wander back here. Stay where we put you. There's a lot of reasons. Number one reason is safety. Man, you guys are good. Number one reason we want to keep you there is safety. Safety. You don't know what to expect. You don't know what to look for. It can be a potential problem. All right. Set etiquette. Set etiquette. First thing I put down is count to 10 slowly the moment you walk on set. Things change so fast. If you step on set, you see something and you run for it because you think, ah, oh, I got to do this really quickly, then you've rushed into something without the forethought. Literally, step on set. Just count to 10 in your mind, a little slow, looking around, observing equipment, people, talent maybe, your apartment head, whatever it might be. Just take a moment to take it in before you speak, before you do anything else. It gives you a chance just to kind of soak it up and then move forward. I'm guilty. I'm guilty, guilty, guilty of stepping on set and just take care of them, taking care of them, taking care of them. I'm like, okay, I'll go home. But uh, just make sure that you slow yourself down stepping on set. I'll skip down. No running on set. We talked about that earlier. There's absolutely no running on set. I'll probably be the first person to run after I've said that. But there's no running on set. It can be done in a timely manner. You run. We have a safety issue. You pull down lights because you don't see the stinger. You know, you got to be careful. You got to keep your eyes open. So no running on set. Walk to where you need to go. We have radios. We can call if we need something. Say again. Show me scar. Oh. I can't. Oh, yeah, this was actually, that's good. I don't know if you can see that well. I actually have this, like, mark across my leg here. It's actually dented the bone. And this was from two years ago. I did a shoot down in North Carolina, and I was running out on the wet grass, and I was the gaffer, the chief lighting tech. I jumped up on my truck, slid, and went right into a piece of metal, and the thing like, swelled for, like, two weeks because I couldn't quit working. It was, like, one of those kind of shoots. But um, very dangerous. Thank you, Steve. Uh, cell phones off near set vibrate otherwise meaning that if you're within proximity of a set and there's any thought in your mind, maybe I'm close enough, just turn it off. Gail's looking here. And he'll stop and say, someone's cell phone's vibrating. And you don't want to, I mean, that's when you're like. <laughs> and if you're real, real close on set, it can also cause. Thank you. RF interference and stuff like that. Using wireless mics and stuff, causing an interference. Same reason you shut it off and take it on and off the plane. So if you uh, have an important like phone call you're expecting and you have to be on set, give your phone to somebody else offset. Make sure it's on vibrate. They can be there watching that for you. Okay? Texting. Seriously, a lot of that texting beep 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 beep. You know, it just kind of goes off, makes noise, even vibrating it makes noise. Um, let me just jump to texting. I think I listed on here. Um, we all love, the, I hate texting, honestly, but we all love to text, right? We all love to text. Uh, texting is not a problem until you're texting and walking. Um, you text and you walk, you trip on a cord, you bump into a light, you run into talent, you knock a lens out of my hand that costs $4,000 because you're not paying attention to what you're doing, you're trying to text someone. If you're texting, please do me a favor, just stand still. Step off to the side, do it if you've got to do it, and then get back to work. Just, it's just a safety issue. Uh, oh, very important. Do not. I'm going to write the important ones down. All right. Do not handle equipment 
from another department. Now, volunteer base, micro low budget, faith pace, independent film. We're all about teamwork. So I love you guys. All about teamwork. That's why you're here. You want to help out. And I appreciate everyone that is here, either full time, part time, or as a day player, because you want to be a part. It's never helpful when you unintentionally break or damage something. And that's typically what happens. You see something. Hey, I want to help. We're wrapping. I'm going to help camera. You reach down. You grab this case handle like this. You pick it up and turn because you're going to walk with it. Top flies open because it's not latched. Lenses fall out. There goes 20 grand like that. That's expensive, but more importantly, maybe not more importantly, but it takes time to replace. So now we can't even keep shooting because you were trying to be helpful. You feel terrible. I'm pulling my hair out, right? I'm like, oh, okay. I appreciate it, but the lack of forethought because you're not trained in that department has now cost the production time and money. So what you do when you have wrapped your department crew, you've wrapped your department, you're ready to go. You got keys in hand and you see someone over there is just working really hard and it's four in the morning. Put your key in your pocket, go over there, find the department head. Who's the department head? Austin's department head of G&E? Good. Austin, what can I do to help you? Okay? Chances are he's going to say, I'll put stuff here, you pick it up, and you put it beside the truck. He doesn't want you pulling lights down because you haven't been trained how to pull a light down. You don't know if it's hot or not. He doesn't want you damaging or breaking equipment yourself or the location. So when you go to that department head and you ask that person, how can you help? Now you are truly being helpful. And we appreciate that. Anything outside of asking, Kelzo here, a lot of expensive equipment, a lot of little pieces. In your being helpful without asking or going through the proper channel, you might lose a piece of equipment that's expensive and means we can't shoot tomorrow because we needed that piece of equipment. So I'm just saying this again. Please respect the departments by going to the department head and saying, how can I help you before you touch anything in that department? Bronson's trained on camera. Jake's trained on camera, I'm trained on camera, and Ari's trained on camera. That's it. No one else is going to touch camera. Jason is the executive producer, but he will not be walking in and grabbing my camera to carry it out to the car. He respects our department. Even though he is the chief and the executive producer, and he's the big cheese, he still respects the fact that he doesn't know it like we do, and that's what we need to do. So I always reiterate that, or excuse me, I always make a point of that, in every class, because as helpful as you want to be, it's not helpful if you didn't think through it and you don't know how to handle it. Any questions about that? Okay. Expert advice. You may have expert advice on something. You might be an electrician. Maybe you quit doing it or you learned it in college, just never used it. And you see your gaffer here plugging one of those power strips in the wall and then plugging five power strips into it and then plug in like five more power strips into each one, and then you got like this mess, and you're freaking out. Of course, Stuart would be freaking out, but if Stuart's not there and nobody else says something to Stuart, you might have expert advice on a better way to handle that load, right? Spread things out, whatever it might be. Go to your apartment head first with that advice. That was kind of a safety issue, so we can't really use that example, but something similar to that, you may have a better idea of how something should work. Go to your apartment head first and say, hey, I've noticed in the G&E, the grip and electric department, that they're doing something kind of funky over here. I got a better way to do it. You know, how should I approach Austin? And they may say, hey, let's go talk to Austin. Or he may say, or she may say, go directly and just see if you can't get a moment with Austin. And then you can take that expert advice and share it with him. But if you're just popping in the middle of him doing something, telling him how to do his job, he may not take it real well, or you may not know something, and then you might feel embarrassed. So just with that expert advice, we... I appreciate the fact you guys know things I don't, but just go through the proper channels and sharing it. Okay, video village. Video village is a term we use typically for a cart, bigger than this, with a monitor on it, and like four or five people standing around it. That is the, that is the place where we have 
the picture that we see through camera A. The director's there. There's a DP I'm usually there. The gaffer's there. The focus puller's there. Those are four. Jason may bring in Sheriff Mike Brown to stand around there. I'm not going to stop him. That's fine. He's got a gun. Come on up. Watch it. <laughs> Those are the people looking at that monitor. Video Village is off limits to everyone else. It's not being rude to anybody. But if I get 40 crew people coming behind wanting to see the picture and they're all kind of scooting in, it's a lot of traffic, a lot of noise, and a lot of traffic. And there's cables always running everywhere. So we need to make sure Video Village is left alone. If it's a monitor on a cart, don't go near it. We will show all the crew and the talent that's there at the end of the day footage. Hopefully every day, every couple times a week, if nothing else. Every other day, maybe. We want to show you scenes we're cutting together, because we are cutting this film as we're shooting it. We want to show you what we call dailies. It may just be a shot of something happening. We got these fun car scenes where police cars are going down this dirt road and stuff, and kicking up dust, kind of cameras on cars. We want to show you that. We want you to get excited about that. But we want you to see it after we shoot it, not while we're shooting it. So please be conscientious about Video Village. We don't want you lingering around it, and, uh, and we'll show you the stuff in time. Uh, know the set. Know which way the camera's pointing. I'll tell you my funny story about that in a minute. Know where the stingers are. If you see an orange cone in the middle of a doorway, chances are right below that orange cone is a stinger. It's just there. If you trip over a stinger under an orange cone, I'm going to laugh at you. Just all there is to it. After Stuart gets on to me, I'm going to laugh at you. Because I'll be like, it was like it was right there. Orange cone. It's like 18 inches high. How can you miss it, right? It's right there. Keep your eyes open. Don't be texting and walking, and you won't, you won't run into it. Um, don't be texting. Uh, well, we talked about texting. Offset, we're fine, as long as you're not walking. All right. My funny story is uh, War of the Worlds. Um, I was uh, uh, one of the, the guys with the uniforms on Army guys, National Guards, whatever. The first, uh, first three days, we did that scene, or first two days, we did that scene. And then on the third day, we started off, and they had us dressed in camo. We're doing this whole scene and everything. And then at lunchtime, which was our midday meal, uh, they said, okay, everybody that's Army, and that came in their BDUs, we didn't call them that in the Marine Corps, but came in those uniforms, can go home. If you <clears throat> came in your civilian clothes and you want to dress back in civilian clothes, you can stick around and you can be one of the extras. Who saw War of the Worlds? With Tom Cruise, remember the scene where the uh, ferry goes under and they end up in the water, they climb out of the water, and they're walking through the trees and the clothes are falling, and then you see like this big like exodus uh, in the country. It was like, like hundreds of people like walking, and they're tattered, they're dragging their suitcases, and then the big thing comes over the hill and there's a big battle and the boy runs up. Okay, anyway, so that scene where everyone's walking and Tom Cruise is saying, Robbie, wait up, Robbie, Robbie, wait up, wait up, Robbie. And him and Dakota Fan are walking, and Justin, whatever his name, Chadwick or whatever, is walking up ahead. Well, that's the scene we were shooting. Well, I came out there in my regular clothes, had a backpack, it was freezing cold, had a little beanie on, and they said, okay, you go stand over there. So they put me over here. Like, 150 yards away, I'm like, that's a camera over there. Number one, that camera wasn't going to see me. Number two, it was pointing the wrong way. Well, I'm an extra. I want to be in a movie. So I just kind of wait there, and the guy's like, you stand here. I was like, okay. He walks off. I just start walking. Now, the funny thing is, I didn't look like an extra. All the extras had all this makeup on and tattered clothes and these ridiculous props. I looked like crew. So I used that to my advantage, walked all the way down, up through the crew tent, past Tom Cruise and his Asian girlfriend, this is before Katie, Asian girlfriend at the time, out the back. I actually talked to um, Tom Cruise's body double, looked exactly like him from behind. We talked to him from Ohio, I forgot his name, David something. We had a conversation with him. And then as they were setting the camera up, getting ready to shoot the scene, I thought, hmm. So I walked up. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. Walked up. And just stopped right here. The camera's right there. I was like, all right, this is it. So, okay, well, how am I going to see myself in the movie? Because I know I'm going to be fuzzy in the background, right? Now, I did exactly the opposite of what I'm telling you not to, what I'm telling you to do. But I wanted to be in front of the camera. I wanted to see myself. So when they called action, I thought, I know, I'll limp. So I limped like this with the scene. All right, back to one. Shot it, shot it probably like 12 times. I don't know, I, Tom Cruise just couldn't say, wait up, Robbie Wright or something. But we got, had a shot, boom, done, go home. Six months later, whatever, the movie comes out. I'm sitting there. There I am! I see myself. I'm limping. That's me. And then it's gone, just like that. <laughs> My friends are like, yeah, that's you, right? I'm like, no, that's me. I knew I was limping. 
But that's what I don't want you to do on this film. We don't want you to get in front of the camera and limp so you'll be on picture. If you want to be in front of the camera, call up Caroline, the lady that was just standing back with the blonde hair and the glasses. As I mean, it don't matter. Call her up. See her afterwards. She was the one that dressed you earlier. She's the one handling extras in the background. And then you can be in the background, and maybe you throw a little limp in there or do your hair like this or whatever, and you'll be in the film. It's not as great as it seems, but for the crew and for anyone working on set, we want you to know where the camera is and avoid it. Okay? It's happened. We're sitting there behind the camera. We're looking at it. Suddenly someone says, who's that? And we see somebody sitting back there usually, okay, literally in frame, texting, you're like, Bob, oh, sorry, you know, just because he was over there, we moved the set up and he never moved. He's got those fingers going. So we don't want you to be, so know the set, know where the camera is, know where the stingers are, know where the craft service table is, you don't have dehydration, know where these things are so you can get from point A to point B and not be in the way. All right, big one, stay off, stay off. G N E truck. <laughs> FYI, G N E truck is actually in the shop, or it will be Monday because the transmission is shot on it. But you'll see this truck eventually. It's a white box truck. It's not huge. It's a 16 foot truck. It says Alexander Films on the side of it. This is all of our grip N, you know, that's and N, grip and electric. Okay? So all of our lighting, all the ways of control lighting, and a lot of our little fun goodies are on this truck. If you're not on the G&E team, you're not allowed in this truck. It's my truck, but I tell you, even I respect the fact that it's not my department. If I need something, I'm going to ask Mr. Lewis. I'm not going to say, well, it's my truck, I'm going to my truck. No, I'm not. I'm going to say, Mr. Lewis, this is what I need. He'll bring it down for me so I can have what I need. I respect the departments like I ask all of you to do the same. Stay off that truck. You don't want to end up with a, a leg like mine. It's dangerous. It can be slick at times. You can take your toes off if you don't watch what you're doing. You'll be proud of that little yellow I put on there to watch some toes. You'll be proud of me. Okay, but it's slippery now, so it's maybe not so good. Anyway, stay off that truck. By no reason. You, you, it, uh, we need a stinger. Oh, we need a stinger. Oh, we need a stinger. We need to put we need a stinger. Let's go in the truck and get a stinger. You know, you're climbing up on the truck to pull down a stinger. No, he's responsible for that equipment. If he doesn't turn the truck in with everything on there, I'm going to say, also, oh, I don't know. If you need something, this is the guy you go to. Actually, you go to the best boy key grip, but we'll talk about that. Okay, but you go to the head of that department to get it. All right, use chain of command to resolve any issues. Go up the ladder. We'll talk about that. Last thing. Leave it off. Okay, I talked about this the first class. Forgot the second class. All right, be mindful of your dress code of your dress and your language. Sometimes people can be colorful. I will not tell you my favorite word. But sometimes you can be kind of colorful with things, right? The way you dress, the way you speak. Well, think about what you're representing on this film. Talk about that film. But don't talk about that film when you're hammered at a bar at 2 in the morning. I'm on this film, it's fine and fine, okay? That's just not going to go over well with people in the community. Really? The, and I say this, I don't expect any of you to do that, but I was on a film, and one person here knows what I'm talking about, and, uh, because they were on that film with me, and uh, the crew every day would go out after work and just get hammered. And it wasn't a faith-based film, so you kind of expect that, but to me it just it felt so wrong. I thought this is just not right, that these people are doing a job, but they're also representing this organization, this company. I wouldn't want my crew to go out. I, mean, I can't say what you do in your personal time, but I still think you need to think about who you're representing. I'm representing this film. So I'm going to be careful in the way I dress and the way I talk. I don't think I dress too weird. Okay? Some of you are a little more colorful, but just be aware. Hey, i got to be thinking about the way I dress when I come on set. I want to be conscientious. Now, don't have to go Puritan on me or anything, but just, just be aware of that. Just be conscientious. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I forget so many things. There are no flip-flops or sandals if you're crewing. Clothes, toe, toed shoes. If you're an extra and you're supposed to wear flip-flops or your talent, by all means, do what you're told to do. But when you are crewing, PA otherwise, wear closed-toed shoes. 
If you wear boots, make sure they're not those boots that are real slick on the bottom. It can be like work boots. I want to talk about your chain of command. Last thing. You can write this down on the back if you want to, or you can uh, um, just memorize it. Whatever's fine. What is this? Okay. To kind of understand how this thing works, film is a business. If you haven't already learned at this point, it's not as beautiful as, you know, Stars or U.S. or People Magazine makes it out to be all red carpet and, you know, you're walking, you're pretty, you come up with a nice car, you're making a lot of money. This is a business. This is a crazy business. A lot of long, long, hard hours. Christina and her cohorts know about it. Crew knows about it. Man, we've been working our tail off getting this thing done, and we got a lot of work ahead of us. It's a business. Every business needs an organization. Jason Campbell is your executive producer. Okay? He works slash with and for Mike Brown. Not full bell. Mike Brown. Sheriff Mike Brown. They're the ones pretty much making this happen. Their film. Okay? He's the top dog. But you don't need to go right to him when you walk on set and start telling him your grievances. Under, and i got to look at my chart because I'll do this so many times I'll start dropping things. All right. Under your executive producer is your director. Now, I will say right now that I've never gone to film school. This is the way things are done generally. So if you go take this and go put it online, you know, filmschool101.com, you may look like a goof, so just be careful. This is just a general understanding of things, laying it out. There are actually whole diagrams out there you can look up. But under the EP is a director. This is the guy pulling it all together. This is the guy that carries a creative vision. He still answers to the EP, but a good EP is going to let a director do his job. All right? You have typically three departments. You have an AD unit. That's an assistant directing unit. You have your production designer, you have camera. This is the way things are working. Director, the AD unit, Bill over here is the AD. He has under him a second AD. Here in the States, it's a second, second, and then a third. In Britain, it's like second, third, fourth, fifth. We have a second, and a second, second, and a third. This person right here, second, second, is a talent contact. If you are a speaking, you know what I'm saying, if you are a speaking role, you speak in this film, you say something, this is your point of contact. I say this respectfully, he's going to babysit you. It's his job to welcome you on set, get you to hair and makeup, get you to wardrobe, get you a bottle of water if need be, get you to a waiting place, get you on set, get you offset, get you back, see you off with a wave. That's his job. It's not, I use babysitting just in a lighthearted manner. He's working hard to make sure your needs are met. Everybody has, every production has a second second. If you're Tom Cruise, you probably have 15 assistants. You guys won't, you just have Brandon. But Brandon's a great guy. I know that already. Never met Brandon. Brandon, I love you. All right, your third. Do we do, we do the? Okay, let alone right now. All right, we have a third. The third. Whoever this third is, this third is dealing with background extras. So if you are a background actor, background, then your point of contact is your third AD. And Bill will let you know who that is. When you come to set, this person talks to you. They work with you. They get you to here to there, the next place, and everything else. Third AD does a lot of other stuff to help support Bill. The second is responsible for your call sheets, getting them out to you, logistics of scheduling, changes, anything else that has to be done. Second is usually sitting in a trailer, making it happen. Bill is the guy on set yelling the whole time. He is basically the right arm of your director. The only time the director ever addresses anyone is usually at the start of a day, hi, welcome everybody, if you got something to say to you, okay? And then he's right with the talent, and he's talking to Bill, and he's talking to me, and he's talking to the production designer, and he's saying, this is what I need, this is what I need. 
And then he's quiet. He's working with the actors. This is a quiet guy. Who knows Justin Rossbacher? Yeah, we love him. Real quiet guy. He's working. He's like, okay, Bill, let's go. So Bill starts doing all his yelling. And then Justin says, action. Cut. And that's all he says. And he's back to doing his thing. So he's just kind of quiet anyway. But your AD is the one making this happen with scheduling and such. Busy, busy man. Production designer is Christina. Christina. Chris. Christina. Christina is your production designer. Under Christina, you have varied departments. You have wardrobe. Wardrobe. You have hair and makeup. You have props and, I'm going to kind of throw it all together here, sets. Okay, just in case you guys don't know the difference. Prop is anything an actor touches or handles. This could be in frame, but if an actor doesn't touch it or handle it, it's set. It's part of the set. If the actor picks it up, it's now a prop. It changes titles. So you have a prop master, props master, who handles and keeps up with props. We might shoot a scene today where I pick this up and I walk out of the room. Two weeks later, we may shoot a scene where I walk out the door wearing the same thing, carrying the same prop the same way. Who keeps up with that prop for two weeks? The props master. Sets, we talked about hot sets. These are the people that dress these sets. Hair and makeup. Wardrobe. We have wardrobe, somebody running that department. We have key costumers under them that are helping them in managing that department. Under camera, we have G&E, and the camera unit. Camera unit basically is responsible for building cameras, getting them up where they need to be, setting them up, tweaking things, getting it done. Along with camera unit, you have G&E. They're working together here. G&E is your gripping electric, responsible for all the rigging of all the lighting, where they're going to put it, how they're going to put it. This team, this is one big team here making that picture beautiful. So when you look at that monitor, you're like, wow, that looks so good. Okay, this is this team making it happen. And sounds here for effect. They're great. <laughs> they work, and I'm, I, gotta, I love this guy. Um, w they work directly with us because they're saying what they need from us, and we're telling them what we need from them. So we're working together to make it happen. But sometimes the director might go rec directly to sound with his needs. So this is basically a loose diagram of how this thing works. So if you're in any one of these departments, you understand there is a chain of command. Now, typically, the chain of command doesn't work. I kind of did this wrong, actually. It's kind of like answers to, answers to, because these guys actually all answer to Bill as needed. Um, and a lot of times, the second AD will actually talk to these guys about what needs to be done as well. But if you're in the AD unit, Bill's your contact. You're in here, Christina's your contact. Even within these departments, you have contacts. Your camera, I'm your contact if your camera unit. Uh, G&E, Austin's your contact, and Austin works with me. Sam, Jonah's your contact, and he has guys that are under him that do their own thing there. You're in hair. You may have talked to me and only me up to this point. I don't really want to talk to you anymore. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude, but the thing is, you could ask me tons of questions, and I'll be like, I don't know, talk to Alexander. It's happened like twice. Blah, 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 blah. Talk to Alexander. Send, because it's just not my department, and I can't advise you, and I don't even want to begin. Hair and makeup, not my thing. Sound, not my thing. Design, not my thing. Wardrobe, definitely not my, not my thing. You know, so these are all departments that we respect. I can do some G&E now. I can do some location stuff. Oh, I forgot locations. Locations kind of swings out here. Your location manager, that's Langley. And of course, I should put Stewart above everybody else. Here you go, Stewart. <laughs> Langley Coleman, though, he's your location guy. Uh, he's the guy that, if you need to know, the department heads, if you need to know where to set up, wardrobe pops in. you got to find Langley. Langley, where are we setting up? Hair and makeup, Langley, where are we setting up? If we don't have your trailer yet. Um, props, where can I keep my props? G&E, where do we park the truck? Sound, where do I set up? Camera, blah, blah, blah. So this is, this is one big working unit here. But by respecting, like Alexander said, respecting this chain of command, it's going to get things done a lot quicker. We're not going to have a lot of hiccups or problems. Honestly, please don't come to me unless it's just not working any other way and you can't get an issue resolved before you walk off set and say, that's it. 
you can see me at that point. But if you don't get to that point, hopefully you never will, then you're good to go. But then yesterday I saw a bumper sticker and I thought, that's my new motto. The road to success is under construction. I said, man, that is so true. Like we have so much to do getting from point A to point B. But we're not going to stop because we hit a few hiccups. We're just going to keep plodding along. 6.30? Oh, I'm doing good. Okay, I won't keep it too much longer. Um, all this happens, and then what do we do with it? We go to post-production. So from the camera, the footage goes over to our post-supervisor. He's the guy sitting there putting it together, making it happen. He's the guy that's going to be showing you that, those dailies. You got to watch the edit. You get excited about what's happening. Um, thank you. Well, I hope this has been helpful somewhat to kind of help ease your mind. Um, it's a lot of information thrown at you. I don't expect you to know it. You can go review this cheat sheet in the morning when, you're, when your mind's fresh. 